Good morning. Today we are going to be learning about stars and some of the basic properties of stars. So uh, what I'm going to need you to do before we start the notes is open up the Google form that I've shared with you. And as you're watching this video, so it might be helpful to watch from your phone, you are going to take some notes and answer some questions along the way. After you're done in classwork, there will be a lab where we are going to tell time with stars. So we'll come up for that when we're done. All right, so one of the first things that I'd like to start with is this picture right here. I'll give you a minute to look at it. Some of you might say, oh, that's super familiar looking. And uh, the name of this painting is by a famous artist named Vincent Van Gogh. And he called this painting Starry Night. So we are going to chat about this live tomorrow and I'm gonna ask you lots of questions about it. So at this point, you've already done that and we're gonna move on to the next thing. All right, so what is a star? Well, by textbook definition, a star is defined as a burning ball of gas that gives off electromagnetic energy in the form of light and heat. That is a really big definition. Um, so what I like to do is break it into pieces and talk about each part. So a burning ball of gas. Well, what kind of gas? What is a gas exactly? Well, as you guys know, there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. That's not it. It goes beyond the scope of that. Um, the gas that the sun is composed of is a hydrogen gas that's held together by gravity. And so um, it's not even gas, it's plasma, because the sun is superheated. Um, when it says it gives off electromagnetic energy, well, we all know the sun gives off energy because we can feel it every day. Um, but electromagnetic energy is energy that travels to Earth in the form of waves. So in other words, we can see the light waves from the sun, we can feel the heat waves, and so forth. And then it says in the form of light and heat. So that's what it means by electromagnetic energy. And so where does that energy come from? It comes from nuclear fusion. That's not the same thing as the energy in a nuclear reactor, like the Fermi down in Monroe. Um, nuclear fusion happens when atoms smash together. And we'll talk about more of that in detail when we look at the sun later on in the year. So that's the basics right there on what a star is. Now, the second main property about stars I'd like to examine is the color of them. So if you take a minute and look at this diagram, notice that that's a picture from the Hubble Space Telescope which is out there giving us all these images of a random portion of the night sky zoomed in. So I know your eyes don't see the stars like that, but stars are many different colors. To you in the night sky, most of them appear as a tiny white speck. There are some orange and red stars that we can see, but tiny white specks is how most of us see the night sky. So most stars can be that, but they can be blue. Look at the picture. There's blue white stars in there. There's stars that are white, stars that can be yellow, stars that are orange, and even stars that are red. So all of those colors appear in that diagram. Now let's look up close really quickly. These are a cluster called the Pleiades, which is found in the night sky pretty soon in the constellation Taurus the Bull. And the Pleiades are a, it's a cluster of really blue colored stars. When you see that in the night sky, you see it as a white color, but those are blue stars. Bluish white stars, like Sirius, for instance, do have this bluish glow to them, so it's kind of a combination. So Sirius is a really bright star in our winter sky. Moving on, white stars. A lot of stars appear white in the sky, just like you see them. So Canopus is a star that is just pure white, and there's a field right here of white stars from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, what we always mess up on is the sun. As you know, the sun is our closest star and we are orbiting it. But since you were a little kid and the teacher said, hey, draw the sun, you may have grabbed a yellow highlighter uh, or a yellow crayon and you colored the sun, you put some cool little sprites on it. If you're really fancy, you use like red and orange, you put a smiley face. But in reality, everybody, our sun is really just white. Um, it only appears to be yellow because the yellow is the brightest wavelength that comes off of the sun that we end up seeing as it's filtered through Earth's atmosphere. So what we see with our naked eye is a yellow color. That's why you weren't incredibly wrong making yellow suns, but it really in reality is a white star. 
All right, so if we look at the picture of the sun, there's a couple of space satellites that are going around taking images of the sun all the time. And they can actually screen out all the different wavelengths of light from the sun and get every one of the images that you see right here. So the one that we always see from Earth is an image more like this one. It's called the photosphere. Um, and we see this yellowish color because of the atmosphere and the way that light waves bend. Some stars, though, can actually be yellow. So Capella is a star right now that we see in our sky. It's really bright, not that bright, um, but it appears a pure yellow color. So that's what a yellow star looks like. Some stars are orange, and with the naked eye, you can actually see some of these orange stars. Arcturus is a star that we see in our sky right now. And if you know where to look, it is an orange color. You can definitely tell it's different from surrounding stars. And then finally, some stars are red. We call them red supergiants. Betelgeuse is the name of a star that's in the constellation Orion, which you see right here. And Betelgeuse is, in fact, a red star. So that wraps up color. Stars can be many different colors. I like to say Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, the colors of the rainbow. There are many different colors. Many different colors. Okay, the third characteristic of stars is their size. Um, so most stars are medium sized, like our sun. But I like to use our sun as an example because it's a star that you're really familiar with. However, there are stars that can be really, really small, less than 20 kilometers in diameter compared to the sun. So what is 20 kilometers in diameter since we're using the metric system there? 20 kilometers would be like you leaving Wyandotte right now and driving to the middle of downtown Detroit. That is about 20 kilometers. So some stars, their radius can, or their, sorry, their diameter can be that small, really little. However, some stars can be 1,000 times bigger than the sun. Can you imagine that? Our sun is huge. You can feel its heat um, from Earth, and the sun is crazy, 93 million miles away, crazy far. And so imagine a star that's thousand times bigger than that. That is insanely large. So our sun, like what is its actual diameter? It's 1,390,000 kilometers across. So in other words, if we put that in the English system or imperial, that's 864,340 miles across. So you still are like, great, it sounds really big. Let's put that in perspective. If I had you guess how many suns, could, or sorry, Earth could fit across the diameter of the sun, what would you guess? Take a second. The answer is 110 planet Earths would fit across the diameter of the sun. That's how big the sun is. Now imagine a star that's a thousand times bigger than that. And if you could imagine the sphere of the sun, because stars are spherical, held together by gravity, if you could imagine cracking open the sun and dropping in Earths one after another inside, you could hold a million planet Earths inside the sun. So the sun is pretty big, but it's only a medium-sized star. So there's a lot of pictures about this on the internet. Here we go. This first picture is you're looking at the sun, and do you see Earth? Look carefully. Earth is that tiny little dot next to the letter R. Remember, you could fit 110 of these across the entire diameter of the sun. This picture shows the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter, which Jupiter is so big, it could hold all of the other planets and everything in the solar system inside of it. And yet look at Jupiter compared to the sun. Very, very, very huge, all right? This picture somebody did, this is the sun compared to every planet in our solar system. Look very carefully at Pluto. You're like, I don't see it. It would be one pixel on the screen invisible. And then this picture really, really blows my mind. Hopefully you're like, whoa. So let me explain it. This is Earth. And if we watch Earth and put it next to the sun for size, Earth would be right there. Now here's the sun. If we move the sun and set it next to the biggest known star, it would be that size and the star wouldn't even fit in the photo. What I would have to do is zoom out, see the biggest star known, and the sun wouldn't even be visible. That's how big stars can get that are 1,000 times bigger than the sun. So the solar system that we are currently orbiting, one star, is a tiny little place in the entire universe. 
Now, I am actually going to show you this video live to start class tomorrow. So you will definitely watch this with me. It's about three minutes and somebody had the time to put together a scale size of our solar system and all the stars outside of our solar system. Um, so you're gonna enjoy that. It'll give you a scope on how big the universe really is. All right, because Betelgeuse and Antares, those are stars. And if you compare these super giant stars that we see in our night sky, so they're in our galaxy, the Milky Way, compared to the sun, once again, the sun is a pixel. Okay, the last fact about stars that I'd like to discuss is their mass. So this is where things get a little confusing. I wrote that most stars have about the same mass as the sun. However, the sun is 300,000 times more massive than Earth, even though the sun is made of a plasma, right, a gas. So the air in this room right now is a gas. So what I'm saying is the sun is 300,000 times more massive than Earth. Well, imagine going out and picking up the heaviest rock you can think of. So Earth is really heavy, yet the sun is that much bigger and all of the gas weighs 300,000 times more. But things get confusing when we look at other stars. So the sun, comparing the sun to those small little baby stars I said that could fit between Wyandotte and Detroit, those stars, even though they're smaller, are actually more dense and heavier than the sun. The reason why has to do with their age, and we'll talk about that a little later. So the rule is the dense, heavy stars are small, and the less dense stars, the lighter ones, are actually the bigger ones. So those stars that are 1,000 times bigger than the sun, they're actually lighter than the sun. And so I'll explain that later on. But mass can be a little bit confusing. So the last fact I wanted to tell you, though, is even though we know that our sun is a medium-sized star, if you look at everything in our solar system that orbits the sun, comets, asteroids, meteors, planets, you, and everything on Earth, 99% of the mass of our entire solar system is contained within the sun. That means everything else you know of is only 1%. And that's in our solar system. So space is an incredible place. And we're going to dive into the details about stars coming up with the lab.